Hello, it is Wednesday, May 4th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Wednesday puzzle, so maybe a little bit of a um, step up in difficulty from Monday and Tuesday, a slightly more complicated theme. We'll have to see. Uh, in any case, this edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Victoria Rajishka, Austi Pelisser, and as always, the inestimable hood monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to the four of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel and help making this series a sustainable part of my daily work. I very much appreciate that, and I appreciate the support from everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign, regardless of level. So thank you so much for that. If you would like to join their ranks and get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date and the new ones that go up each week, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And as a benefactor, you can get the daily solve. Let's check the crosses mug. And at any level, you can also get access to that extra channel on the daily solve discord chat server. Although the rest of the daily solve discord chat community is free for anybody to join. So you can browse that as well. And it's also free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you to everybody who has done so. And with that, let's move on to today's puzzle. Uh, this is a Wednesday puzzle, of course, constructed by Eric Bornstein, who has constructed a handful of puzzles previously for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's, let's get going. To quickly microwave something is to zap it often. And cylindrical pasta could be ZT, um, often used in baked ZT. And blank the way, along the way, one might say. A dog owned by a talking mouse. Um, not sure. Maybe this is one of those things that will be very obvious once I see it. Afflictions are ills. Oh, Pluto. <laughs> it was obvious once I saw it, but couldn't think of it immediately. So Mickey Mouse's dog, I suppose, Pluto. And people who acknowledge when they've been verbally bested. Um, not sure. This might be a theme. This might be theme related, and it's also some kind of pun. So this will be this will be some sort of clever phrase that probably involves a wordplay in some fashion. I suspect. Paper opener would be an intro introduction. So in this case not a physical opener, but rather uh, an opener in the sense of a prologue or something that opens an argument. Ruins a shiny fabric as a pet might. Right, okay, this will be another theme pun, I suspect. Vet. Well, it could be a veteran. It could be a veterinarian. It could mean to evaluate, as in a potential political candidate. A survey, maybe? Oh, no, that doesn't look right. Okay, sorry. What about this? Run the show, say. I'm not sure. Equipment not needed in miniature golf. Oh, I suppose you don't use a golf tee in miniature golf. Is that true? Yeah, I think it is true because it's all putting. Okay. Stock index found in 1885, informally. It could be the something. Uh... It seems like, hmm, uh, not sure. What about this? Elder Levy in Schitt's Creek. Uh, Eugene Levy, the great comedic actor. And a cabana is a hut, maybe? King Tut's land would be Egypt, King Tutankhamun. And profundity would be depth. That's very deep, very profound. Be right with you on the way or something. Oh, this does look like the, okay. So this is the something. Oh, the Dow, the Dow, I see. Yes. So, oh, it's the stock index. Sorry. For some reason, I, I think I read stock index, but I was reading it as stock exchange. So I was trying to think of NASDAQ or the New York stock exchange or something, but this is the Dow Jones industrial average, which is a stock index, uh, a sort of weirdly weighted average. The Dow the formula that produces the Tao is a very strange and sort of arbitrary one. Okay, director Anderson is Wes Anderson, the film director. And be right with you. I'm still not sure what that is. What about this? Two for a basket. Points? 
two two points for a basket in basketball. I, it's intensely embarrassing that I don't instantly know that, but I think that's correct. Okay, be right with you. Oh, one sec. I see. One second. Be right with you. And people acknowledge when they've been verbally bested. Oh, touche types? Oh, right. So <laughs> I think this is playing on the phrase touch types, as in touch typing uh, on, a, on a computer keyboard. But we've added an E here. So perhaps, so we've turned touch types into touche types. So touche meaning, um, uh, you got me, touche. Uh which derives from sword fire or, or um, fencing, presumably. Um, so I think that means maybe, at least in our other uh, theme answers, we're going to be adding an E to a fairly ordinary phrase, and we're going to be creating a punny phrase that satisfies the clue. So let's see. Oh, vet is screen. You could screen candidates, vet candidates. There we go. Run the show. Say host. Host the show. Why didn't I immediately think of that? Uh, stratovolcano in Sicily. Etna. Mount Etna. So that must be a stratovolcano. I think at one point in my life, I, I maybe sort of knew what that was, but I'm not sure I can explain to you what classifies a stratovolcano at this point. All right. I'll do that right away. On it. Oh, that's funny. That was sort of one of my one of the things I said about somewhere else. Uh, international pact that entered ended in 2021. Is it SALT? Is it one of the SALT treaties? No, 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 no. It's NAFTA, of course. Yes, yes, one of the stranger political events of recent years. Um, the dissolution of the um, uh, North American Free Trade uh, Agreement, sorry. <laughs> Took me a second. Okay. And should that be true? If so. And then, oh, here we go. Here's our revealer. Embassy staffer or a hint to 17, 23, 49, and 59 across. Um, touch types goes on the something. Ruins a shiny fabric. So, oh, sorry, I didn't finish reading this. So embassy staffer, or, oh no, I didn't, I did finish reading it. Embassy staffer, an attache. And so we're taking, and a hint, oh, <laughs> oh, very clever, attach E. So indeed my, my um, inference about what's going on here was correct. We are, we are meant to attach E to an existing phrase. That's very good. So let's see, goes on the, these all, I don't think we could remove either of these E's. So the E that we're adding must be somewhere else. Ruins a shiny fabric as a pet might. Goes on the lame. So we're taking goes on the lamb, a common phrase meaning to um, flee. And we're adding an E on it to create goes on the lame. So the pet has gone, has urinated on the lame, the shiny fabric. Very clever. And blast with a beam of photons, lays, I suppose, as, as, an, as with a laser. Maggie Smith, for one, is a, a dame, Dame Maggie Smith. And sweet. So we looking, we're looking for, for an um, exclamation that matches this in both meaning and tone. Uh, but I don't see it immediately. Shot taker. Camera. Okay, there we go. Straightforward. Fussy in the extreme, anal for anal retentive, and determined to do, if you're determined to do something, you're set on it. I am determined to solve this puzzle. All right. Cooler in glasses. Ice. Ice is something that cools things and is put in glasses. Islanders group. I'm not sure if this is referring to people who live in certain islands or if this is maybe a sports team. I'm not sure. Berkeley, familiarly. Um, well, if it's the University of California at Berkeley, which is the, the school I attended, it would be UCB or actually Cal familiarly for University of California, because Berkeley was at the time it was founded, it was the, the only University of California. Um, so that's probably the answer. Payroll dedu deduction. 
Um, parent on a field trip, a chaperone. And woman's name that sounds like a letter of the alphabet is L. So, oh, this, this does look like a sports team. So it could be NHL, the National Hockey League. And payroll deduction. Oh, inco income tax, right? Sorry. Most obvious answer to that. I didn't think of it. So sweet is dope. Okay, there we go. That didn't just didn't land on that for whatever reason. And here we have a skating jump is an axle. And at the original speed in scores, this actually came up within the last week or so, I think. A tempo is a, an indication in musical scores to return to the tempo you were previously at if you had slowed down or sped up because of a, of a different score marking. MCAT subject. I think this is the, the medical oriented um, standardized test for graduate school. So maybe anatomy with that T there. A group of eight could be an octad. And to suspend. Um, what about this? Took a load off, sat down, sat. Leading to girls, at a girl. So suspend is to what? Hand? Oh, hang. Right. If something could hang, if something is hanging, it's suspending, you could say, metaphorically. And bad advice from grandpa. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get that long answer just yet. So let's keep solving the crosses. So true could be amen. Um, although this looks sort of strange, so maybe not. What about this? Spammer's medium, email. And revolutionary Trotsky would be Leon Trotsky. Corral, oops, corral EG could be a pen. You could have a corral, a pen for animals. And organization co-founded by W.E.B. Du Bois is the uh, NAACP. And diez menos dos. Uh, so what, 10 minus two is eight, so ocho in Spanish. And then a 10% offering, often traditionally in re religious tithing, one would tithe 10% of income. So bad advice from grandpa. What is going on here? Maybe hang is incorrect. Seems right. Is octad wrong? Maybe that's wrong. Not sure. What about this? Managed to stomach a cracker spread. Well, cracker spread could be pate, uh, liver-based spread. And so without the E, it would be pat. So managed to stomach... I mean, had, had down pat. Oh, right. Sorry. I was thinking, ah, but if you had something down pat, that doesn't mean manage to stomach, but no, it's not the original phrase that matches the clue. It's the modified one. So had down pate. No, that doesn't quite work, does it? Managed to stomach. Oh, got down, got down pate. There we go. That works. So got down pat, meaning you learned something uh, so thoroughly, you sort of know it by rote. Um, but uh, to but if one got down pate, one uh, got it down. We managed to stomach that cracker spread. All right, so this really does look like amen, doesn't it? So maybe one of these. Oh no, acknowledgement, or something like that, or bad judgment, bad advice from grandpa, something, something judgment. Um, well, I'll come back to it. But let's check these crosses. Volkswagen Compact is a Jetta. And reversed is undid. Um, desire, ken, it's with, yeah, no, yen, right. Ken is sort of within your ken is um, kind of within your knowledge. And then desire is a yen. Psychoactive drug from a cactus, peyote. All right. What about what's going on down here? Feared. Fifth century ruler. Um, Attica? Or no, Attila, sorry. <laughs> Ridiculous mix up there. Attila the Hun, of course. And game with the game with the objective of winning all the cards. Is it war? I think so. And summit attendee is a leader. So um I think. So you have a summit, a meeting of very important people. And I think 
Oh, so sorry. Let me check the crosses because I keep missing these recently. So football cry is ole. That's fine. And eight points. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> I read this as eight points because of our two points in a, for a basket earlier. But here we have eight pints in a gallon. I I will never. I will never internalize what all of these measurements are. I, I can never remember them. Um, anyway, uh, but fortunately I don't have to because I'm, I now live in a uh, metric country. Anyway, um, summit attendee is a leader. I think this phrase was coined by um, Winston Churchill um, as a metaphor, essentially meaning it, meaning it's a summit because it's the top, t- it's the sort of ut- ut- utmost meeting the top table with the top people it's everyone is everyone there is at the summit so all leaders basically okay bad advice from jen grandpa all right so this part's going to be grandpa somehow sorry i'm sure it's very obvious um i'm gonna move on because it's not obvious to me right this moment numb as a foot um, not sure. And here we have the blank habit, the eyes have it to indicate that those in favor of the motion have won the vote. Colosseum country, Italy, the yeah, Roman Colosseum. And without could be lack. Um, doesn't seem sort of odd here, so maybe not. What about this? Handel's La Giustizia for one. La Giustizia. An aria, I suppose it must be an aria from an opera, sort of f- song with a featured singer, basically. And computer scientist Turing would be Alan Turing, the great British computer scientist. And overwhelming amount would be an avalanche, I think. Bacchanalian cry, let's something, let's eat, but that doesn't fit. Um, let's drink, maybe. Bacchus, the god of wine. And also, uh, I don't know, excess generally, I suppose, sort of hedonistic excess. Oh, numb as a foot. Asleep, of course. If your foot is asleep, it's numb. And without would be less. Oh, maybe not, though. Doesn't look right here. Bad advice from Grandpa. Da. Uh, Something I'm not seeing, sorry. Without. Oh, maybe it's not let's drink. Maybe it's let's dance. Um, Without songs. And then without less. What? Maybe it's not let's dance either. Passe judgment? Yeah, it must be passe judgment. As So drawing from the phrase pass judgment, to pass judgment, but here we're adding an E. And it's passe judgment. I see. I was too focused on the grandpa bit. So the grandpa bit just means it's old. It's old wisdom. It doesn't. We it doesn't. We don't need to attribute it specifically to Grandpa. Grandpa's version of this would just be an example of passe judgment. So there we go. Passe judgment. It's worth noting also that judgment and uh, certain other similar words are spelled without an e after the g in American English and with the e after the g in British English. I don't know how often you'll need to um, <laughs> bring that knowledge to bear, but uh, it's. Uh, that's just so you know. <laughs> anyway. Oh, let's party. There we go. All right. So we're, this is the version that includes all of the other possibilities I'd previously considered. Okay. Pa- parabola piece would be an arc. So a parabola, a, um, you know, certain curved line mathematically. And uh, an arc would be a part of it, a piece of it. Undefined ordinal, ordinal. So an ordinal being, for instance, first, second, third. But an undefined one would be the nth, of course. And to turn red, maybe, I'm not sure. Castle material could be sand, sand castle. Oh, to die, oh, right, to die, as in to dye an egg red, for instance, or a shirt or anything else. And there we have it. So we have this very fun uh, Wednesday theme. And here's a theme where it does, we do sort, well, yeah, it helps to understand what's going on. Once we've gotten at least one of these, we can sort of see or, or maybe start to suspect that what we're doing is adding an E. We're actually attaching an E to a common phrase. So we had uh, touch types becomes touche types, people who acknowledge when they've been verbally bested. Um, goes on the lamb becomes goes on the lame, which 
is uh, ruins a shiny fabric as a pet might. Uh, past judgment becomes passe judgment. Bad advice from grandpa. And finally, um, got down pat becomes got down pate managed to stomach a cracker spread. And in, in the case of all of these, we are attaching an E. We are attaché. And, uh, and there we have it. So certainly a more involved theme in terms of, of needing to do some active wordplay. And we, we have to understand the wordplay and we have to understand um, where, why we, we have this extra letter that is modifying uh, some kind of original common phrase. And so I think that is pretty fitting to a Wednesday. I think that's in the, in the wheelhouse for Wednesday. And honestly, probably easier relative to un- other Wednesday puzzles than yesterday's Tuesday was to other Tuesday puzzles. Or maybe this was just on target for a Wednesday difficulty and yesterday was a bit tough for a Tuesday. That's my suspicion. I think other people in the comments basically agreed with that. Um, we'll see if you agree about today. And that's that for today's puzzle. So now we can consider a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. So what do we have? We actually have several highlighted here. Uh, ZOR95 explains that the Ig Nobel Prize mostly gives awards for scientific work that seems ridiculous, although sometimes has very important consequences, with a dash of satire thrown in. For example, a leading proponent of homeopathy has twice received the chemistry prize. My favorite Ig Nobel Prize is the fact that one of the 2000 prize winners was Andre Game for his work levitating frogs with magnets. Game was one of the researchers who discovered the material graphene and received the 2010 Nobel Prize itself. That's quite a run to have received both the Ig Nobel and the Nobel Prize. Well done to uh, Andre Game. Uh, Also explains... Reed Richards is not a boxer. He is a superhero. He is part of and the leader of the Fantastic Four and is a genius scientist who took himself and the other members of that team, the first Marvel superhero team, to space where they were irradiated with cosmic rays, um, which caused him to develop stretching powers. So that was Mr. Fantastic, who I thought, based on the name, might have been a, um, a boxer, something like that. Okay, and Dances with Logic explains a Yule log could be considered a clock before it became a confection. This is interesting. During the dead of winter, the darkness would be beaten back by felling a large tree and feeding into a steady fire for several nights and days. The span of time uh, that took was known as Yule. It's very interesting. And unfortunately, despite my efforts, Brian Spurrier points out I had two missed clues this time. 21 Across annual video game competition was EVO, the Evolution Championship Series, an event with many fighting game tournaments. And then 66 Down was Cousin Blank, uh, the Adams Family character. And the answer was Cousin It, I-T-T. So thank you, Brian Spurrier. And I'm sorry for once again missing some clues entirely. Average Wars regarding OOO, I think I I read it as out of office. OOO says it can also stand for out of order. So we'd still have the same first two words. And also (laughs) confirms the G in new GNU is indeed silent. That's what I thought. I don't know why I second guess myself, but thank you, Average Wars, for confirming. Uh, Dylan Sporer points out, yeah, I had the same thought, but I didn't mention at the time. Mentions, obviously this was all necessary to make the letter interactions all work, but I find it interesting that Chin, Q-I-N, is spelled Chin, C-H-I-N, in this puzzle. Even in the accepted English translations of Chinese terms, which chop and screw the alphabet to let us easily pronounce unfamiliar spellings, I feel like using the C-H to create the Q-I has fallen out of favor a little. I think so too. You really don't see it much uh, these days, but of course it was necessary in order to uh, create the chin um, uh, prefix for Chinese, which I think is actually related. I think Chinese actually do, is, I think it's related to uh, the Qin dynasty, which was um, maybe the beginning of the Chinese empire. Anyway, don't quote me on that. <laughs> uh, Caleb Russell says, the OOO clue had me extremely confused until you brought up tic-tac-toe as OOO is also a specific piece of chess notation. It is used to denote when a player castles to the queen's side of the board, while OO, just two O's, represents the same to the king's side. That is very interesting. I may have known that at one point, but I certainly did not remember it now. So thank you, Caleb, for that interesting um, side note. Anyway, that's all. those are all the comments I had from yesterday's puzzle. Thank you to everybody who wrote in. Thank you to you for watching uh, the puzzle. And thanks to everybody who has subscribed to the channel or especially the Patreon campaign. Um, thanks to everybody for any of those things. 
Uh, I'll be back tomorrow for a Thursday puzzle that will be a slightly more complex theme, probably. Maybe even a rebus, who knows? And uh, maybe a tougher puzzle in general. Hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Uh-huh.